Welcome to Wholesome. Today we are going to talk about the safety rules and requirements for working with hot materials on the preheater tower. The preheater is a multiple vessel, multiple stage material heating system. The heat exchange between the gas and the material takes place in the cyclones while both are in suspension. Many different types of designs of preheater towers are in existence using this basic principle. The most common design is the parallel four stage preheater. Some of these can reach output rates of up to 8,000 metric tons per day. The pulverized material is introduced at the top of the preheater and becomes suspended in the gas stream and is heated in successive stages as it falls. The top stages will be anywhere from 350 to 425 degrees Celsius, and then the temperature successively increases approximately 200 degrees Celsius per stage. The hot material will enter the kiln at approximately 1,000 to 1,100 degrees Celsius. 1,000 degrees Celsius is 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. This means the material entering the kiln is approximately 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Certain plants in the industry have high sulfur content in their limestone. This chemistry and fuel mix can cause the inside of the preheater tower to build up with material in certain places. Part of maintaining the preheater system is to clean these areas of the tower daily or at specified intervals. There are several safety items to consider when performing these dangerous tasks. We will talk about them now. The first thing to remember when cleaning the preheater tower is that personal protective equipment, or PPE, plays a crucial role in your safety. There are two levels of PPE required for the tower. The first level, or daily cleaning level, will vary slightly by plant depending on the type of equipment and the risk assessment performed by each safety department. It consists of a fire retardant knee length jacket, fire retardant protective sleeves, earplugs, fire retardant protective hood, safety glasses, a hard hat with a face shield, and fire retardant gloves. You need to inspect all PPE before you put it on, and if any of it is damaged, you should replace it with new PPE. The employee must also have a working two-way radio to be in contact with the control room at all times. It is very important when wearing this PPE that you have no exposed skin. Your fire retardant sleeve should go under your gloves in order to protect your arms and wrists from hot material. It is also a requirement to not tuck your pants into your boot tops. Hot material could fall into your boots if you tuck your pants into your boots causing severe burns to your feet. This PPE will be uncomfortable and hot depending on the climate in which you work. It is very important to your personal safety that you wear this equipment properly at all times. Burns from this hot material are usually severe due to the extreme temperature of the material. Each plant will train employees on their specific cleaning procedures. Procedures and frequency vary slightly by plant depending on several factors. Now we are going to talk about some of the other important factors to remember during daily cleaning. If your plant uses air cannons on the preheater, you must remember to lock them out and bleed them off before poking on the preheater tower or opening a poke hole. Failure to lock out the air cannons could cause the air cannons to discharge when you are not expecting it, and it could blow hot material out on you. Second, it is very important that you only open up one port or poke hole at a time. If more than one door is open, it will give the control room a false oxygen reading. By having only one door open, it limits the hazard to you if the tower were to become positive and cause material to puff out. The tower is normally under negative pressure. If it goes positive due to draft changes or material restrictions, stop working and let the control room know, and the control room will adjust the preheater draft. You should stand back from the porthole at this point if the tower is puffing material or gases out. Once the tower goes back to negative, you can continue working. Another safety item to remember on daily cleaning is safe jackhammer use. Jackhammers are heavy pieces of equipment to which you will attach a jackhammer bit. These bits can be different lengths up to 12 feet long. The jackhammer bit will act as a pendulum when material falls on the bit inside the tower. It is important to keep your face and body away from the jackhammer handle so as not to get hit if weight falls on the bit inside the tower. You should be sure your footing is level and secure when using a jackhammer. The jackhammer will be moving and you do not want to cause any arm or back strain. When using an air lance, you must remember that you are blowing air into the preheater system and it is more likely for hot material to come back out of the poke hole and burn you. 
The hardness of a buildup will be the determining factor if you use a jackhammer or air lance. Air lances are used most often in soft material buildup, while jackhammers are used with hard material buildup. High pressure water is used at some plants based on a risk assessment. High pressure water lances can cause a steam explosion inside the tower which increases the likelihood of hot material coming back out of the porthole. Use extreme caution when using a water lance. It is not recommended if at all avoidable. Regular rest breaks are a must due to the heat and physical demands of this job. Drink plenty of water during your shift and let your supervisor know if you have any symptoms of heat stress. Sometimes during daily cleaning, a cardox or other type of CO2 system is needed. There are some safety items to remember when using a CO2 firing system. The most important thing to remember is that you must be properly trained on the safe use of a CO2 system from the manufacturer or other competent person before using the system. There are also several regulations and procedures that we must follow from ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Agency. You will be taught these procedures and have your name added to certain forms. Some of these procedures include signing out Cardox parts and then relocking the Cardox box after removing the parts. Now we will talk about a preheater plug. A preheater plug is when a blockage causes material to stop flowing through the preheater system. A preheater plug is the most dangerous thing that can happen in a cement plant. Because of the high temperatures, high velocity, and kiln feed chemistry during normal operations, some buildup occurs on walls of the riser and walls of the large vessels. As a result of the changes in temperature and kiln feed chemistry, some areas of buildup will build large enough to break off and fall down through the tower and or vessel. If it breaks off and falls in a vessel, sometimes it is not big enough to pass through the venturi opening or bottom of the cone, and this is what causes the plug up. As long as kiln feed is still being fed to the tower, the vessel or cone will just fill up. As this happens, temperatures above the cone will start to cool or level out, and temperatures below the cone will start heating up very fast. The control room can detect the material buildup from reviewing the temperature and pressure profiles of the preheater tower. Sudden changes or a combination of changes in the temperature and pressure indications are how buildups and plugins are detected. You are new to the industry and new to the plant. You are being let out by an experienced tech when you hear on your radio from the control room operator, he believes that the preheater tower is plugging or trying to plug. The control room operator, or CRO, takes feet off of the tower and kiln and begins to stabilize the tower. The first step the CRO will take is to clear the preheater, kiln, and cooler areas of all personnel. Then the lead tech will communicate to the rest of the crew to put up the plug preheater signs and barricades. These are located at all access points to the kiln, cooler, and preheater areas. These barricades are an important communication tool that ensures non-necessary personnel are not in harm's way. The supervisor will organize the crew at a designated meeting location to discuss the plan for unplugging the system. At this time, all PPE should be brought to the designated meeting location. This PPE includes silver suits and hoods. The first thing the crew will do is tie the tipping gates open. This ensures material that is broken loose will flow down through the vessels. The crew will also shut off all air cannons and purge rings to prevent them from discharging during cleaning, which will result in injuries to personnel if left on. Please remember that it is important you inspect your silver suits before each use. Any damaged suits should be thrown away and new ones purchased. Your safety comes first, so wear your silver suits properly at all times.
Once you are properly dressed in your silver suit, the supervisor will take the crew to start checking the preheater for the actual plug location. This entails throwing cubes or balls through each vessel to determine which cone is plugged. This should be strictly supervised based on experience. Do not open any hole or port unless specifically told by your supervisor. The supervisor will direct the crew to locate the plug from the lowest point of the feed pipe of the plugged vessel. Start at the bottom checking each port from the bottom up until you find the plug. The kiln feed is a fine powder that flows like water if discharged. A kiln feed discharge is a very dangerous situation. When working on a plugged vessel, always check for an escape route and which way the wind is blowing. The escape route should always go up and away from the vessel, never down. There should also never be anyone working below a plugged vessel. The employees should be positioned where the wind would be blowing any hot dust away from them. Under no circumstances should you open a hole or port larger than cardox or CO2 size. Use a small 4-6 to six foot poke bar to locate the plug. Air or water should never be used to locate a plug. Once the plug is located, two crew members in silver suits will attempt to unplug the system using a cardox. The supervisor and any other crew members not wearing a silver suit should go up at least one flight of stairs to get out of harm's way. Once the cardox is fired, if you think the plug has been cleared, then throw cubes or balls to verify. Otherwise, repeat previous steps to find additional plug location. This preheater plug clearing process can take several steps and several renditions of throwing cubes and blasting cardoxes. An important thing to remember is that employees will get hot while working in a silver suit. The supervisor should take care to rotate the employees in the silver suits every 15 to 20 minutes and ensure plenty of water is consumed. Also, remember any dust spilled on the preheater floor is extremely hot. Do not step in a dust pile. It can burn through your boot. Once all plugs are thought to be cleared, the crew should start at the top of the preheater throwing balls or cubes to ensure no other vessel is plugged. Once the tower has been deemed completely clear, the supervisor should sound the all clear and the crew should remove the preheater plug signs. At Wholesome, you are very important to us. Please remember to follow these preheater safety procedures at all times.